I love spring. With everything around here warming up and coming out of that winter hibernation, it's finally the beginning of the spring foraging season. It's late April now and here in the hills each year can be slightly different with when the weather starts to shift. The winter and the spring always kind of quarrel for a while. We think we're finally all the way in and then we'll get a snowstorm. So things pop up at different times but this week I finally got to do two of my favorite forages that I've been looking forward to for so long pretty much since this time last year. And the first one was tapping birch trees. With birch trees, you can also get sap out of them, just like you can with maple, but the window of opportunity with this comes after maple tapping has passed and right before the buds come out on the trees. To tap the trees, I used a 7 16ths drill bit, which matched with my spout size. You can drill about an inch, inch and a half into the tree and slightly upwards and immediately you should start to see a liquid dripping from the hole. And then you'll want to have a collecting bucket or bag under it that is secured tightly enough to hold all of the water once it fills up. The water is so delicious. It's a little woody and sweet, super crisp and refreshing and comes out slightly cold. And beyond just taste, it's rich in nutrients too. Some trees do drip faster than others, so you'll want to regularly check how much is in your collector so you are avoiding waste if it starts to spill over. And from what I've read, the water can flow for about two weeks, but you want to just collect enough for what you'll use. When done properly, you're not going to damage the tree or kill it. You definitely want to collect responsibly. And when you're finished, you'll definitely need to plug the hole. And I find the easiest way to do that is to take a stick that is just a little bit bigger than the hole and you can hammer it in. Just stay there for a minute and make sure that there's no excess liquid coming out still. It may take a few tries to find a stick that works best, but it is very important that you do create that plug. You want to respect the tree and take care of it. When you're satisfied with what you have, 
You can keep it in the fridge and drink it fresh for up to a week. Over time, it'll start to get cloudy and a little bit sweeter. But if you want to preserve your water and extend how long you can drink it throughout the spring season, you can also freeze it into ice cubes and keep it in the freezer for a very long time. Like I'm doing right now, I'll just pop a couple of the birch water ice cubes in with a fresh glass of water. And I love it. It's such a powerful drink. One of my other early spring favorites is ramps, which are also known as wild leeks. They grow so abundantly here, and I'm so grateful for that because they're so delicious. There are some hillsides around here that are just complete oceans of ramps. So this makes it much easier to forage responsibly. Even if you do come across a very large patch of ramps, you wanna keep in mind that removing the bulb and root system makes it so the plant will not grow back. So you'll want to only remove the leaves from the majority of what you're taking. And then you can remove the occasional bulb. They're very aromatic with a strong garlic taste so you really don't need that many. One of my favorite ways to prepare the ramps is to make a big batch of pesto, though you could saute them or roast them or pickle them or turn them into some sort of aioli or butter. All are delicious. Ramp pesto is very distinct and it's different from basil pesto in the sense it's a bit more garlicky, but it's still very delicious and bright and fragrant. We love eating it this time of year. It's so versatile and palatable. Preparing the ramps can be a little bit involved. You do want to go ahead and take off all of the roots from any bulbs, and then you'll wash the bulbs and leaves very thoroughly before blanching them which is where you'll bring the water to a boil, toss everything in for a few seconds, and then follow up with an ice bath. They're then ready to go into the blender. This is very perishable, so just like with the birch water, if you want to extend the use through the season, you can freeze the pesto for up to six months.
and as the season progresses it's important to carry the mindset of being grateful and only taking what you need. When done right, it's such a beautiful thing to embrace the ephemerality of these foraging time frames and the ability to really tune in to your surroundings and live with the land. This is just the beginning and there's so much to look forward to. <laughs> ah. <laughs>